Next, John Newell, another committee member, will tell us about the good work being done by Partners in Progress with its partners in rural Haiti. John? You're muted. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I, I had already started a presentation when I uh, realized uh, that. So I um, was like, oh, where's this at? And uh, I had to get to the um, Zoom again. So anyways, thank you, Joyce. Uh, uh, sorry about that, everybody. So as Joyce mentioned, uh, um, uh, I am a, a board member of uh, Partners in Progress, as is Joyce. Um, it's a small organization, but um, uh, very fruitful. And, uh, and St. James has been sponsoring Partners in Progress in a specific uh, aspect of Partners in Progress uh, for the last um, over 10 years now. And um, <clears throat> so we'll talk a little bit about that and talk about Partners in Progress in general. So uh, as you can see, our tagline here is changing the narrative from vulnerability to resilience in a changing climate. Uh, Partners in Progress, uh, we try to be um, a little bit different in the way we work, which is, is in strengthening communities is where we start with and working closely with these communities. Um, we end up sometimes doing the same thing um, uh, as other organizations. Um, it's just that our tack is, is slightly different in really focusing on these communities so they can grow and, and prosper and strengthen um, themselves as well. Uh, so let's get on uh, with it. Uh, Partners in Progress focuses on Haiti, although we do have a, a pilot program uh, moving on to uh, Uganda uh, as well. Um, but a little bit about uh, Haiti. It's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. It is the country third most vulnerable to climate impacts. So you might have heard of like the earth, there's been several earthquakes and several hurricanes that have hit Haiti in the last decade. And uh, you may have, seen, may have seen some pictures. I don't have one, but uh, I'm sure I could have got one, but of, of like of Haiti compared with the Dominican Republic, they share a, uh, an island. And you can see Haiti is almost barren of trees and foliage, whereas uh, the Dominican is very green. Uh, and you know, over the years, uh, the, with the poverty of Haiti, people have used the trees for, for heat and for uh, other purposes. And um, so it's been a major issue for climate impacts. Uh, it is the... Um, 168th out of 187 uh, countries in the Human Development Index from the UN. Uh, that, that measures things like health, education, income generation, those type of things. And uh, you can see some of the other bullets here about malnourishment, uh, it, how, how um, poor the people are in rural Haiti, $1.25 a day, a very water poor uh, country and uh, nine of 10 homes, uh, you know, that, that are really unsafe and healthy. And this is in our Western hemisphere. This isn't far away at all. Um, and this is the, the total country. So that's uh, the reason that we're focused on uh, Partners in Progress uh, in Haiti. Uh, some of the root causes, uh, you can see there's been political issues uh, with, it's, it's really been an issue with uh, leadership has been very, uh, very corrupt for very, very many years. So the uh, funds don't go back into, you know, the, the country, they, they stay with the leadership, et cetera, which you can see uh, with the second bullet there, we've talked about the environmental and climate changes, the educational system, 90% of, edu uh, of the education in, um, in Haiti is via private schools as opposed to public education, 90%. So there's a real issue with education um, in, in Haiti uh, from that perspective. Our mission is to strengthen cultural, social, economic, and environmental assets for building sustainable communities. And I talked a little bit about that, of us focusing on communities. Um, and we have three uh, focus areas that we, we really try to work on. One, elevating education. 
two, building equitable community, and three, growing food security. And I'll touch a base on each of these just a, a little bit here. Elevating education. One of the things we do is uh, they're uh, one of the communities that we've worked with the longest. Partners in Progress, I think Joyce knows better than me, but it's been about 15 years. And we started uh, with, um, with uh, a community in uh, Fondwa, Haiti. And uh, we, well, as I said, we worked with that uh, community and found what their needs were. And one was the need uh, for a school in that general area. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, so this school now, it's, it's called St. Antoine uh, School, and it's run by the Sisters of St. Antoine. And there's about 700 kids that go to this school. And it's not just the village of Fondwa where these children come from. <clears throat> it's all over the region. Kids come up from two, three hours walking uh, one way to get to the school. Um, and so how does Partners in Progress continue? to um, help this school uh, besides um, working with the Sisters on uh, St. Antoine in a variety of ways. Uh, one is through our partner of Sacred Heart Parish right here in Pittsburgh. Uh, they uh, pay for the student, the teacher salaries uh, for that. Uh, and they've been doing that for uh, close to, it's going on 10 years now uh, that they've done that. We also um, have been uh, able to uh, crew, um, help build schools. Uh, we actually, with the communities we work with, one of the communities, we uh, purchased uh, what's known as a compressed earth block um, machine, which builds uh, bricks out of just clay and sand and water, uh, which all can come from Haiti itself. And these bricks are actually much more thermal. It keeps the cool in uh, during the day um, in Haiti. Uh, so these, cool, these schools are uh, cooler. And we recently um, helped uh, build a school in, um, in a, 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 it was called Seven at Cabrel area of Haiti, uh, working with a, a partner parish in, in North Dakota uh, that paid for the building. Uh, it, it employed over 60 uh, Haitians from the community where that was built, as well as the community where the compressed earth block uh, is building. And we're, we're looking at expanding in a variety of ways to continue to help uh, employment and the building of, of these, um, these um, uh, much uh, better uh, insulated uh, buildings and just uh, concrete. Uh, so moving on, building equitable community um, is, uh, is the Fatima House. And that's where the funds will go for this uh, particular fundraiser. Uh, we have over 60 uh, children in the Fatima house. It's not actually an orphanage. It's, uh, as we mentioned, how poor Haiti is. So these are parents that can't, uh, don't have the resources to take care of the children themselves. So um, it's in the same locale as the St. Antoine School. And the, uh, once these children become old enough, they go to that school uh, to, to learn, to try to break that cycle. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, the Fatima house. And as I mentioned in the beginning, St. James and now St. Mary Magdalene has uh, been uh, sponsoring uh, Fatima house in a variety of ways for the last decade. Growing food security is the last thing I'd like to talk about, uh, which is um, I, I'm not good in Creole, so, uh, and some of you, it'll be blocked by uh, your uh, Zoom chat, uh, but um, we have this program, uh, once again, working with the communities uh, in inclusive active participation. So we started with one community, and instead of saying, hey, this is what science teaches us, or this is what you should do, it was like, it was, we are going to work with this community that was interested in improving uh, farming in their community. Uh, so, and it would included active uh, participation, diverse, young, old, men, women, uh, to get together to discuss uh, what might work. And, you know, some of the elders talked about how they remembered uh, that um, what, what was happening was Haitians uh, mainly burn their crops after the, after the season, they burn everything down and restart. Uh, and some of the elders were talking about how they remember different ways of, um, of uh, farming. 
Um, and, you know, they didn't always burn the crops. They used these crops and, you know, for fertilizer and some, uh, something called Ramp Vivan, which I'll talk about briefly. So, uh, and that's what was discussed, like, how could they, you know, do a better job uh, with trees or, or with, um, you know, with uh, one, something called cover crops, which some of you might have heard, which is just, you know, you grow another crop along with the uh, crop and it doesn't, you know, give you produce, but it might cover uh, and give uh, shade and fertilizer, et cetera. Um, and uh, so these, these tools have been used and this uh, other thing that's happened is, is, you know, we started with one community, but now there's cross community sharing with other, other communities where they may have uh, different ideas. And we're, like I said, we're starting now with this um, project where there has been, you know, some farmers that have been trained on, you know, teaching the various methods that they have uh, learned and how to use this cross community sharing. And we're uh, piloting it, as I mentioned, in it with the community in Uganda. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, what, one of the uh, main things that Partners in Progress does is provide the resources uh, needed to act. Do they need seed for the cover crops? Do they need uh, trees? We're big on tree nurseries. Um, and just the education piece of, of what has worked and some of the, you know, we've, we've actually done a little and, and partnered with others, uh, both the universities in, um, in the US as well as universities in Haiti to, you know, study how, how has the soil been impacted and it's, uh, you know, the studies have shown, you know, the, the soil is much better uh, where, where the, these things have uh, happened. And here's some of the outcomes. This gentleman used to give seven macaws of corn. Now he gets 16, doubling the output. <clears throat> this woman uh, the only used to be able to grow millet and corn on her father's farm. Now she can take other crops like beans and others to the market. Uh, Ramp Vivana mentioned before, this is uh, organic uh, compost that like you put like hills, little uh, hills around your garden or your farm or between the crops. And so when the rain comes, what was happening before is their guards would just get washed out. Now um, they, they have these techniques so his garden doesn't get washed away. The cover crops can be used for animals. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we're really big on tree nurseries. So uh, a lot of these farmers are, are you know, growing trees. Uh, this woman, you know, people used to laugh at her when they saw what she was doing. Now they want to be her friends and find out what the, uh, more about these techniques. Uh, so, um, you know, we've definitely focused on increasing the capacity for planning and action. Uh, this one here, and sorry for going so fast, but I, I just have a couple more slides. We are also working with uh, one of the communities on value added products, uh, dried soup and um, dried, uh, dried soup and dried tea. Uh, so that they can take it to market and actually make more money than they would just bringing the raw crops to the market. Uh, just the last slide here is uh, we got this is what one of our communities said. Uh, when COVID hit, we found that due to trade issues with the Dominican Republic, et cetera, that a lot of communities were having trouble with just uh, food and, and other necessities. And we were working and we provided funds to some of the communities we work with, but the community we, that we've done the most with, with the agriculture where the people are uh, trained to teach others, et cetera. They said, no, we got this. Uh, we're working with the people that are having challenges and you know, we have the food and the resources. So partners in progress, don't worry, we got this. And, and that's when we looked around and, and uh, shake their heads and said, yeah, this is working. Uh, you know, this is what we, we uh, uh, plan and want to do. So uh, we got this. And with that, I'll stop and turn it over to Joyce. Uh, she's going to speak a little about bread.